all I do like is a really good bit of drama on the telly. And that I know I'm going to get when our guest of the day's name appears in the credits at the top. Ladies and gentlemen, Patricia Routledge. <laughs> so it's a big day on Friday, Children in Need, lots of celebrities yes. doing, doing lots of fundraising yes, activities. Yes, wonderful. But, I mean, all celebrities get called on so much to do so much for charity. How do you cope with it yourself? You well, the most important one. thing to give is time. And one can't always give time, so the next best thing is to give money with which mm. time can, be, can bought be bought and used. Have you got your own pet charities? Yes, I support? have lots of pet charities, but there's particularly one, apart from my undying loyalty to the Royal National Lifeboat Institute, uh, which is Kidney Research Aid Fund, CRAF, mm -hmm. and I'm a patron of that, and that is to research into kidney disease in young people, in babies, right. and it takes place at the uh, Institute of Child Health behind mm. and part of Great Ormond Street Hospital. Yeah, let's and have every some year, of the stuff yes, from, from Friday will be going to that They have a seminar every direction. year and you can go mm. and see the work that's been achieved and done and visit the wards. It's very exciting and very great, moving. Great, good cause to choose. Yes. We'll be seeing you shortly. We're going to tingle your taste buds here with a little bit of ooh, wine. So join ooh, us a bit later than on for that. Good. But, I mean, not many people know, though, and I bet you don't know, Patricia, that our... Now, we've all smiled from time to time at that most famous art form, the Oscar acceptance speech, where the lucky starlet thanks everybody from the chiropodist to the hairdresser for making the performance a success. But there's one form of histrionics that demands an inordinate amount of talent on the part of the actress alone, and that's the monologue. With a good script, the solo performance can become a real tour de force, and there's one lady in particular who's a mistress of the art. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Patricia Routledge. <laughs> <laughs> He's a clever man, is Alan. Oh, Mary. quite He's... brilliant. The he... convolutions in that are just breathtaking, aren't they? A woman and you can I... see everybody, you can see mm. the journey, you know that she saved up for her away day, and then that terrible thing of seeing the dog dirt outside the palace. <laughs> But she does something about it. Well, a woman I know who's not an actress says that she thinks from watching Alan Bennett, and it's particularly the female monologues, the thing that astounds her about him is that he has this amazing insight into a woman's mind, which she says most men don't have. Would you agree with that? Well, I don't know what a woman's mind is. I know what individual minds are, but as I'm, I've got one inside here, I've never really uh, analysed it. But uh, if... Uh, if I've played three monsters uh, uh, written by him, um, he's been able to explain them sometimes by referring to his own aunts. Mm, mm. Yes. The monologue, you seem to have made your own now with these. It's a particularly lonely art form, I would have thought. You're stuck in front of the camera there. It's you, you and you. But if you've got a good story to tell, anybody will listen. See, when he first wrote uh, A Woman of No Importance and asked me to do it, I said it couldn't be done. Mm. He had a terrible time with me. And he said it's the oldest uh, form of entertainment in the world, from the troubadours down, um, from Jesus Christ down. Yeah. He told stories. Uh, tell a good yarn and uh, people will listen. And, of course, he writes a good yarn. The rhythm of that and, yes. and the, the people that uh, are described in it and that he brings to life. You've obviously got favourites like Bennett. I mean, he's got such a tremendous reputation as a playwright now. What makes a part attractive to, the, to you, uh, apart from necessarily who it's been written by? Well, the quality of the writing, which really means that it's got a seeable truth about it, that you can see that it is possible that this person can be made, that you can make this person. And I always find that with a character, it's as though I see it a long way off, somebody a long way off on a road that I recognise the shape of a bit. And then as I work on it, that person comes nearer and nearer and nearer. And finally, by the grace of God and a fair wind, <laughs> we link arms and off we go in the same direction together. That's how I always see it, if it works. 
You started off way back in the old days in Birkenhead. Birkenhead. God bless Birkenhead. Yes. But you've just been back to Birkenhead again, one womaning it in your own sort of composition, your own one woman show. Yes, what was it like very then? much against my will. I mean, I don't believe in it. Only a few years ago, I was saying that I thought the one woman show or the one man show was the last ditch in arrogance. So what and changed your I... mind? Birkenhead, my hometown. And I thought, well, if I don't do it now, if I don't go back there and somehow say thank you to the forces that shaped me in entertainment and mm. one's appreciation of theatre, um, memories of uh, the music hall there and one's first uh, visits to the cinema and pantomime, of course, which is probably every child's first experience of theatre, and grown-up theatre, of course, across mm. the river at Liverpool Playhouse, the riches that were there. And that's part of me, and I just thought, this is the moment. This is it. Plunge in and get on with it. So I went back with a show called Come for the Ride, which people seemed to feel that they wanted mm. to do, and had a wonderful time, an unforgettable time. Talking to young actors and actresses who go and work with people like Olivier and Schofield and the greats and saying to them, what's it like playing with powerful actors? They say, well, you can learn so much. We've seen you recently, as an accomplished actress, in things like When We Are Married, with an absolute battery of stars, each and every one of you accomplished. What's the difference there when you're playing with people? <laughs> do you... Are you a bit naughty sometimes? Not just you, but do you tend to vie with one another a little bit? Is it spicy? Well, I don't know. I think it's bad if you do. Uh, the men tend to will I get a response for that remark um, but the interesting thing is if you are experienced and you know what the going is like uh, you know where each other's ground is mm. there is tremendous regard actually uh, and if anybody does go out of line they know that uh, it's not going unnoticed mm. no it was a wonderful team ensemble uh, effort that. It was a wonderful production by Ron Ayer. It's a mm. masterpiece of a play, a little masterpiece of a play. And it's not for nothing that they call uh, tennis the actor's game, because you send the ball back the way it comes over. Yeah. You were very well known, especially a few years ago, for your musical performances. You were in Cowardly Custody, you did a lot of musical work. You've just come back from America, from Lenny Bernstein's 70th birthday party. You're opening on the 6th of December at the Old Vic in Condide, his yes. musical version of it. Now, he's reputed to be a man of soaring temperament. How do you get <laughs> on with him? Well, I get on very well. He's a good friend. And I was in his last musical called 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue which was not a great success, but it was full of wonderful things. And he uh, chose me to go and play eight first ladies of the White House, which I did with great joy. Um, he just likes the best. Is he and intimidating to work with, then? He can be. He can be, if you've not done your homework. Mm. He requires you to have done your homework pretty well. And that's no bad thing, is it? Are we going to see you doing musicals other than that? Are we going to see you on the box? Uh, there's, I've, I've recorded two programmes for Yorkshire Television um, called Let's Face the Music Of. Mm -hmm. And there's a lovely series coming out, I think in the spring, hosted by Robin Ray with some wonderful people in it, some wonderful musicians and singers. And uh, it's really a tribute to show music. And I've done the coward one, I'm happy to say. Um, with people like uh, people like people with Patricia Hodge and David Kernan mm. and Keith Michelle <laughs> and then the Frederick Lowe one I was in oh that's all Ooh, Gigi and studies. Brigadoon and so on uh, with Ben Luxon smashing good voices we we'll uh, look yes, forward wonderful. to that can I ask you and I haven't primed you for this and you'll probably shoot me afterwards would you just say goodbye to me in the style of Kitty Victoria Wood, that, that wonderful creation of Victoria Wood that we all do to love, dear old Kitty. If you could just sign off in a few <laughs> words as Kitty. Well, I really don't know what I'm doing here today because I'm skylarking. I should be down at the uh, Sadler's Wells Theatre uh, preparing for a performance for the old Vic. Um, but I'm skylarking up here and wine bibbing, which I don't agree with at all. Uh, but it's been very nice to see you ladies here today. Kitty. And uh, in a gemlet. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Kitty and Patricia Outledge. Thank you. <laughs>